So I already had objects before, but um, I'm recreating this so you can see how I did it. So now that the box is created, we're going to go to Adobe Dimension. Alright, now that we have Adobe Dimension open, I'm going to open a new project. And the default is a little bit small, so if you wanted to see what it's at at 100%, then you can increase the size here to make it high res. But for the purposes of this, to my fan's already going on my laptop. Um, it's not as bad as when I have After Effects open, but it's still pretty bad. Um, so I'm going to keep it pretty small for just the purposes of this, but do know that if you end up with a smaller resolution or kind of pixely resolution, that this could be the issue and that you need to increase your artboard size and then also the resolution over here on the side too. You can boost that up to 300 um, and then change the frame size and you'll have a really good high quality image. You could use um, backgrounds on your website or to print out on posters or however you want to use it. So we're going to go back to our OBJ file. We're going to take our box base and place it in here. So you can use these axes to slide around the box. You can also click this button here to lock the box to the bottom of your ground plane, whatever we want to call this. Um, so I like to zoom in and get pretty close to make sure that I'm getting a good view on this. Um, then let's bring in our other flap. So we'll drag this in, um, rotate, and you can hold shift to make sure that these are snapping to the axes that you want. Um, and you can see that as I'm moving this flap over, that it's aligning or kind of sinking into the shape. And that could be a good way if you were trying to replicate paper instead of cardboard, you could keep sliding this into the box and uh, reduce some of that width. But like I was saying, um, once you get this object into Adobe Dimensions, you can still play with the depth here. This Z, um, this Z number is the depth of the object that you've created. So if you wanted to increase it, you could go up to 0.08 and it made it a little bit thicker. But we'll go back to 0.04, I was pretty happy with that. I'm moving that into place. I just wanna see how it's lining up. See, it's hard to see. Okay, here we go. So you can also use these align tools. Let me go ahead and name this flap. That's one feature I wish happened is that my file names for the objects would also go into dimensions, but I end up having to rename these anyways. Um, so we'll do box base and flap and highlight them both here and then click this button and you'll see that these new toggles happen so you can click align center and align top sometimes it works this time it didn't work so i might have to do a little bit of a manual adjustment so i'll make sure that the box is back on the ground and then i'll raise these up until it gets to the height that looks good to me Oh, see now we have a gap here, so I want to press it backwards until it touches. And then to get a clean edge at the top, I'm gonna rotate it just slightly, not even 1%. Let me see if I can, can I do 90.5? No, 91. All right, so now I'm going to move it out a little bit just so that it gives it the flap like it's connecting at the top and then sticking out. Sometimes a little bit of imperfection is good for creating a realistic look because not everything is perfect. Um, so you can see here that I've got this flap. It'll have a nice shadow once I do this render preview here. Yeah, so that looks so much better. I'm gonna play with the lighting because my highlights are getting washed out, but it's already looking pretty realistic. Um, and since this shape was the same on the top and bottom, I'm going to actually rename this one flap one top and then I'm going to duplicate it and call this one bottom and then we're going to rotate it 180 degrees, move it up slightly, but now you can see that these overlap very similarly to how it will when it's created. So see those two almost, I don't have it perfectly aligned, okay. 
So yeah, those two panels go together and then these two panels go together. Um, so that is one side. And then there was another piece, right, that I created. Here it is. And it does look like, okay. I think that piece went underneath. So if I'm looking at the order, I wasn't quite sure how this one went together, but I do think that this flat piece goes here and then maybe that one goes over top, this, this piece, and then those go over top. So I will actually keep this, um, we'll go up with it, rotate it around, just throw it in, see how it goes. Um, and I am holding shift as I'm moving these around. Okay, I didn't get it quite right, quite level. Still is crooked. I didn't hold shift well enough. All right, I think we're almost there. But you know, it might not matter so much. I might just try without it and see if that at least gives us the illusion. Okay. So now that I have this box and it's a pretty good shape, um, we can either start with lighting or we can apply the graphics. I think I'm gonna apply the graphics first so that I can see what kind of lighting I need. Cause if I had a really dark design, I might not need to adjust the lights. So I'm gonna come back here to my panels and I've already, just to save me some time, I've already exported each of these panels, um, created a clipping mask. So, um, how I did that is I took the shape here and then highlighted everything underneath, right click and clipping mask so that it puts it on one panel. For the example here, that didn't quite work, but what you should end up with is each of these panels of the box in individual form. Once you save out all these different pieces, go back to your dimensions file Okay, so this was the bottom flap, right, that I created. So I'm gonna drag it until this blue highlights there. And there it is. So since it was upside down, I'll have to rotate it, place it in the center as best I can, and then expand it until it covers the entire surface of this panel. Once you have your shapes and all of your objects placed on it and it's looking really good, there's one more step and that is to add the texture. So what I like to do for cardboard is come over here to the cardboard. I know, right? It's pretty straightforward, but you come over to the cardboard setting and there are just a few nuances. So when I place it on this flap, it's looking really good. It's looking like a corrugated cardboard. Um, and I also wanna make sure that the color is set to white because even though I'm applying over a graphic that has a white background, it's just as a double check, make sure that you're either one, saving your graphics with the background that you want or adjusting that color to be the color that you want. So if I apply it to that tab, it should also look good. But since the shape is a little bit different, you can see that the texture here is coming through really wide and it's not as narrow as um, it would be like on these tabs, like the closeness and the corrugation is accurate where this looks like a really blown up version of that texture. So to repeat this, you can slide up here, repeat this pattern until it more closely matches five maybe or four. The goal is to try to match what we have underneath. So it's kind of looking like four is the repeat that's going to make this texture look like it should be, like corrugated channels of cardboard. So now that the texture is looking good, all the flaps are looking good, I'm just going to check the lighting to see how I like the lighting if it's accurately representing the flaps and showing the different areas that I want to. So I'm going to click this preview button you can see that, okay, that's pretty good. It's showing the edges and it's showing the overlap and it's not perfectly aligned, but again, it's not really gonna be perfectly aligned once it's assembled. So I prefer that to it looking perfectly perfect. 
Um, and I'm gonna spin it around. The texture's looking good. Yeah, it's got some nice shine. Even from the background, it's looking good. So I kind of like a dark shadow. I like that it's showing the front in a really nice light and then the back in kind of a shadowy light. So you can see here, I've made some camera bookmarks. That's easy to do once you find a setting that you like, you just hit this plus button and you can add that bookmark. Um, since I already have some that are labeled, I'll just show you. Once you have a bookmark, you can pop over overhead one, front, side right. Goes a little bit faster if I turn off that preview. Um, and I do want to say for this overhead circle, I'm pretty happy with it as is. Um, I could create a flat plane with that handle part as a negative object, but um, I included this oval into the art file and I think it looks pretty convincing in Trixie Eye. So I'm saving myself a step by not having to reconstruct that shape. Um, if you wanted to get picture perfect with it, I mean, let me know and I can show you how I added this handle or could add this handle with a hole in the middle, but for the sake of the time of this mock-up, I just kind of faked it. So yeah, now that you have the shape, um, you can go over to render and this is where you can choose all of the views. I usually select all and then remove current view because I have them all bookmarked. Um, find the folder that you want to render it to and hit render. All right, that's it. That's how you make the box. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment to tell me what I should make next.